Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have a good friend, Sam Clement, Courtney Trust. Y'all say hello. Morning, John. How's it going? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Now, guys, I think I'd be doing a lot better if here we were, the week of Christmas, everyone anticipating maybe a little Santa Claus ho 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 this weekend, wanting to get a gift that they don't, they, you know, that they don't deserve, all that good <laughs> stuff, and. Here we are, the markets are, we're thinking we were going to get another $1.75 trillion worth of just funny money spending that was going to goose the economy that much more. And Sam and Courtney, over the weekends, it looked like all that all that kind of fell apart. What happened? Well, Joe Manchin's a no. Yeah. That, that, that was the headline, was Joe Manchin, one person, said no. All right. And with that, thank you all so yeah. much. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, though, I mean, it has been, in my estimation, relatively confusing. You know, we have to read the news all day long, pretty much all the time, in order to, you know, make investment recommendations, economic forecasts, all that good stuff. And it's been kind of confusing exactly just what in the heck is going on, what, how the money is going to be spent. We have infrastructure bill, then we have Build Back Better, We're talking huge amounts of money. And I'm not even exactly sure, no matter how much I have read over and over again, what's in it, what's not in it, whether or not, you know, I was completely clear on exactly what the difference between the two packages. And here we are coming into last weekend. This, I mean, the Democrats are promising this is going to get done before the end of the year. And then all of a sudden it's not. Wake up here Monday morning. Everyone's upset. All, all, all hell's broken loose. People are screaming back and forth at one another. And guys, I mean, what exactly was the BBB? Well, I, I think that's a big question mark that no one really knew. It's kind of a hodgepodge of everyone putting money in for, for what they wanted out of it, and they just couldn't get Joe Manchin again on board. And, um, you know, I think that's where civics comes into play, and people need to understand the role of the Senate and the role that Joe Manchin plays for his own state. Yeah, and I, I would agree with you on that. I mean, Joe Manchin is, as we all know, is from senator from the state of West Virginia, right? And, Courtney, I'm sure that you know that that West Virginia is a major coal-producing state? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> cocktail party conversation, yes. uh, without a doubt. You know, when I'm when I'm having a cocktail at a party, not that I go to a lot of parties. <laughs> so about for some coal reason, uh, yeah, we start, yeah. Yeah, start talking about anthracite coal output and the differences between the stuff they the clean stuff they they mine out in Wyoming relative to the dirty in any of that. West Virginia is number two coal producer and something like number five in natural gas. And so a fair amount of what I could tell what was in the BBB was very much about clean energy, energy of tomorrow, eventual ridding ourselves of fossil fuels in some yeah. form or fashion, going to a completely EV sort of uh, autom automotive industry, more specifically union-made EV. Yeah. I think there, there was some of that. So if I'm a senator from West Virginia, understand that my constituents depend on the fossil fuel sector. Do you think maybe it was a little naive of the Democrat Party to assume that Joe Manchin was just going to fall lockstep behind it, understanding this could kill not only his state's economy, and but, oh, by the way, he made millions being a coal broker prior to becoming yeah. a public figure? And you have to understand the state that he's representing, again, going back to, to the civics lesson. He is in the Senate to represent West Virginia, not to represent the Democratic Party. And he's in a, he's in a state that Trump won by 30 points, I think it was. So he... he People are thinking he should be more in line with the Democrats than he should be in line with the West Virginians. Well, ideally, he wants to get reelected. So ideally, yeah. Yeah. So yes, he's going to vote with what his constituents are going to want. But you're right, and in, in, in that it's hard to imagine a, a, a senator from a giant coal-producing state getting on board with a lot of this. I think the confusion, a lot of it, came from. Uh, earlier, Manchin had agreed upon to general guidelines of what this bill was going to represent, and I think the progressives were worried that if we pass the traditional infrastructure bill first, there'd be a lot less leverage for him to go along with the, the Build Back Better plan. And so I think that's where a lot of the frustration is coming from on the part of the progressive Democrats. It seems as though their fears were well-founded. Your thoughts on that, yeah, Gordon? Maybe they're not as, uh, <laughs> I guess I won't go there. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't, I mean, in the news, as you've already referenced, John, they were talking about it was kind of like a double whammy. So it was like, okay, yes, whammy. that the bill didn't pass, but also the fact that with the Omicron variant coming out, that we are seeing more restrictions um, internationally and stuff like that. And the death um, cases, I know that's not the right terminology, but is increasing. So it's kind of a double whammy to the market. Do you all agree with that? Do you think that that's just kind of more of the media 
changing the market? Well, here we are. Affecting the market? And we are recording this on the Monday, uh, right before Christmas, right. on the 20th. And, Courtney, you're absolutely right. The market is down substantially today. And the headlines have been both uh, the, the defeat or Joe Manchin putting a fork for all intents and purposes in, in the uh, Build Back Better uh, bill, but then also the uh, discussion around the Omicron variant and how governments are starting to reimpose strict lockdowns and what have you. I would say, I would say really for me, and I, I could be wrong on this, but most of this today could be the defeat of, of the bill because you know, that, that was going to be an additional close to $2 trillion worth of spending every year, regardless of how it's spent, whether or not it's going to be efficiently spent. It's just additional money goosing the economy that has to come from somewhere. The Omicron variant, uh, at least here in the United States, some mask mandates and what have you, but we're watching Europe kind of overreact, in my estimation, overreact or relax, relax, react more strongly, <laughs> I guess that's a better way of putting it, than what I, what I envision will end up happening here in the United States. So I don't imagine U.S. investment Investors are focusing as much on Omicron as they are on the BBB yeah. today. I mean, I think I think undoubtedly spending that much money is going to have an impact on GDP, and you're seeing everyone start to slash their expectations for GDP next year. I mean, there's arguments about efficiency and the long-term impact of it, but in the short term, going out and spending close to $2 trillion is clearly going to have a, a impact on the overall GDP of the country. And also, I mean, really, with the, with the, with the BBB, and having broken it down, read it on a number of different occasions, it wasn't just $1.75 trillion in year one. A lot of this was going to be baked in. It was going to be an additional $1.75 trillion pretty much every year. When they're talking about child tax credits, making community educa- community colleges free, um, different types of just just kickbacks, and not necessarily kickbacks, but tax credits and additional expenditures across the entire economy, these weren't things that were going to be sort of a one-off. So this was going to be a massive amount, in my estimation, of new expenditures, uh, just out-of-pocket type stuff that really I don't know if um, this is just running the risk of getting a little bit political here. I wasn't exactly sure what the economic, overall economic output of this is going to be. For instance, talk about making college affordable or community college affordable. Just because someone doesn't pay the pay the price or doesn't pay the tuition doesn't mean that um, community colleges are free. There right. is going to be a cost to society on it. The same thing with, with uh, preschool for everyone. Uh, and then also you're assuming that there are enough people to provide all these services. Yeah. So it's a combination of is, it's not just free because the government says it's free. And there, are there going to be enough people out there to do it? And those, those are a couple of huge question marks. I mean, and that's, that's where we need to be very careful with our government when we are saying things like this is what we want. It's also do we have the means of, uh, of actually enacting it? Right. And providing a quality service enough where people will want to use it. <laughs> I think that's always the goal. Yeah. I think that is always the goal. But guys, you know, I gave you some numbers that I just kind of put out. And, you know, according to the St. Louis Fed, again, more cocktail party conversation. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, federal outlays this year, federal outlays, not necessarily what, how they calculate for GDP, but federal outlays, the total budget expenditures, six trillion eight hundred and eighteen billion one hundred fifty eight million state and local outlays, three trillion three hundred sixteen billion three hundred seventy five million total government expenditures in the United States, ten million one hundred thirty four billion five hundred thirty three. Did I put it on? Gosh, a a, a trillion dollars here and a trillion dollars there, huh? It adds up. Ten trillion, one hundred thirty-four billion, five hundred thirty-three million. That guys, the combined governmental outlays here in the United States are equal to roughly the combined purchasing power parity GDP of both Japan and Germany. It's a lot of money. That's a ton of money. That's what we already have now. So I don't think anyone can really say, hey, gee whiz, the U.S. government's not spending enough money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. not spending enough money. And, oh, well, that's the absolute size. What about the relative size? Well, per capita outlays now, per capita outlays, and that's that huge number that I just gave you, divided by our estimated population, $30,757 per person. That is roughly equal to the per capita um, GDP. Every man, last, every man, woman, child, and what have you, over in Greece. So the U.S. government, in all its form or fashion, spends a ton of money in both absolute and relative terms. It's not a necessarily a question that the government's not doing enough. It's a question of whether or not it's doing so efficiently. Yeah, that, yes. I mean that's absolutely it. I mean. 
there's not a lot of pushback on the 700 plus billion dollars we spend a year on the military and and i would argue rightfully so i think that's money if we're spending it on military correctly that's well deserved it's that a lot of this money really isn't turning into productive gdp and productive growth in the economy and that kind of dead money is where we start to see the issues you know anybody in finance knows debt can be a smart thing to, sure. to take out if, if used appropriately is always the caveat with it and that's i think goes back to the main point that a lot of the debt probably isn't used appropriately or used in a ways to be beneficial in the long term well it's i mean the proof is in the pudding if i borrow one dollar from you in order to generate two dollars that's an excellent use of leverage wouldn't you say so sure however if i borrow two dollars from you to generate one dollar in wealth that's a bad use of leverage. That is a bad use. So what we've seen over the last 10 to 15, 20 years is U.S. government debt growing at a more rapid rate than overall GDP, which means that we have, for all intents and purposes, been eating our money. Right. And that's been the complaint. And, I mean, that's been the complaint with all the bills that we've seen. And, you know, we jo- we talked about this in, in the big bills during COVID last year. Uh-huh where all this money was going. I mean, we sent money to China when they're funding a lot of our debt. It, it just made no sense where a lot of this money was going to. And, and that is not an issue over the past year. It's a several decades, probably more than that long issue. Well, as well I guess we just think, is it like Scarlett O'Hara? You know, we worry about it another day. You're not going to worry about it today. Uh, Isn't that yeah, quote? Uh, that's perfectly yeah, quoted, After all, right? tomorrow's another day. Uh, I think yeah. you did. <laughs> Directionally <laughs> accurate. <laughs> well, yes. well, you know, there is an element of kicking the can down the road. But even but even before the the Build Back Better bill was, I guess, defeat. I guess you can't really call it Yeah, defeat. kick and down the road. We, we, no one really debated with the same amount of energy the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Yeah. The That's money. what the progressives were, were, were saying. Yeah. And, and so it was the money that was going to be spent on roads and ports infrastructure. and infrastructure, all that stuff that we know of as infrastructure. And if you really take pause for a second, you see, Courtney, I'm, I'm kind of yep. taking pause here. I see. If you really take pause, we should also have our blood boiling about that, given the amount of money that I have paid in gasoline taxes over the years, various sundry taxes, a tax here, a tax there. Why hasn't there been money? to keep the potholes out of the road. How come the bridges are in bad need of repair when we have been paying for this all along? Why do we have to come up with new sources of, of expenditures, taxes, borrowing, in order to get to get finance something that the government said they were going to do for us? Well, anyway? it's because the government is poor at allocating capital. I mean, they always have been. That That's the argument for why I hate a lot of these taxes that you see taking money from rich people, whether it's Elon Musk now being taxed over $11 billion this year, what have you, I think the biggest argument against those is that the government does a very poor job of allocating capital. They do a worse job than the than the average consumer would, than the business owner, who ha- whatever person you want to use, I guarantee any business owner does a better job of allocating capital than the government. Well, okay, so just let's put it back to just the average listener and the average investor. Uh huh. Is this bill dead for twenty twenty one? For twenty twenty one, I would say yes. Yeah, so it's dead. I think it's I think it's dead for twenty twenty one. There's a lot would have to happen between now and the end of the year. I, I, I think some maybe a slimmer version early next year. You know, right now this entire bill seems to be dead. But you know, people's opinions change you can put some money in for for something in west virginia maybe you get joe manchin to change maybe you get susan collins to to flip sides who have whoever have you i don't think you can declare anything dead in washington now courtney i mean you worked in washington you're kind of in, in with all this type of stuff you've seen the way the sausage is made better than most right you know i don't see how the more progressive using air quotes right there yes oh uh, great for podcasts <laughs> I've, I've got a face for radio by the way <laughs> and podcasts um i don't see how the left leaners or the progressives in the democratic party are going to get joe manchin to change his mind by calling him names um you know some people are using expletives uh, for all intents and purposes i think jen Psaki called him essentially a liar in some form or fashion, uh, saying that he's flip-flopping and what have you. To the best of my knowledge, 
Manchin really hadn't changed its position on, on the BBB. And I really do think that the progressive element thought that they could just go ahead, hey, let's, we're all Democrats, let's yep. go ahead and do it. He, and he was always out there saying, uh-uh. So, you know, what's the old expression? You catch more uh, flies with honey than you do vinegar? Bees with honey. What you, something. I think it's yeah. flies. It's flies? flies? Oh. Mm. Well, you know, insects. Um, <laughs> you catch more of them with honey than you do vinegar. Well, right now, from what I've been reading in, in the press, what I've seen on the TV, it seems as though other members of the Democratic Party are trying to get Joe Manchin to uh, toe the party line by trying to attract him with vinegar. Vinegar, is but I will say I think that you know when whether you're up in D.C., it doesn't matter what side of the you know party lines you fall, it becomes more it or it is at times they say it's a Hollywood for maybe unattractive people. There's a lot of theatrics that goes on, and a lot of times it's not necessarily that um, someone really feels that strongly. They just make these grand statements to get, you know, on the news and to get publicity for themselves. Like, oh, I stood stood up for the Democratic Party, and they don't care. I mean, and on the back end, they'll still work a deal, and if it's, you know, in the best interest of their constituency, you would hope that they would vote for it. But well, wait a second, Courtney, you're making politicians sound duplicitous. That's your word, not mine. <laughs> so, so, Sam, do you think a deal's going to get done? Do you think Jim, uh, Jim Manchin's just waiting waiting for some sweets? Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, for, if it gets done, West Virginia? do you think that it's going to be a positive effect on I, the market? I think it's a boost to GDP next year. Okay. I mean, I, I think, I have no doubt in my mind that it's a, a short-term boost to GDP just by spending that much money. It's... It, it's hard for me to imagine that not having a, a nominal impact on GDP. The, and the thing is, I mean, Sam is, is right. It would have a short-term boost. It's kind of like giving someone a B12 shot, you know, or or giving someone a cup of coffee. I mean, a short-term buzz and, you know, stimulant and all that stuff. Longer term, the more you rely on the government, the less you rely on yourself. Poorly and, allocated yeah, capital And, and the, the less government. you rely on yourself, the less risk you're going to take. And there's always a risk-reward to trade off less risk you take, the less reward you're going to receive. So the more more we rely on the government, the less risk we'll take as, an, as a society, meaning that uh, the re- re- our, our reward will be less. So that's that's my take on it. I mean, it's just that's just simple, just kind of wa- kind of walking around common sense to me. That doesn't necessarily mean that some people wouldn't benefit from having some of these freebies, but the overall society, the overall economy should slow down as we take less risk. You know, Absolutely. Courtney, what do you think about that, huh? That's interesting. <laughs> you think so? All right, I, I love it. We're, we're <laughs> I think I think it's interesting too. In any event, guys, we'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please by all means let us know. You can always drop us a line at Trading Perspectives at Oakworth dot com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. As always, if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we got to say, please by all means go to Oakworth dot com. Take a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab, Sam and Courtney for all kinds of wonderful information. That's right. Y'all got anything else on this topic for today? That's it. That's it, John. All right. That's all for me, too. Y'all take care.